Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Kelsey, aka Kelsey O'Gee, here on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. And today we're going to get that elusive drop back to your back bend or even maybe your stand back up. So those can be very challenging. Not only do they require quite a bit of flexibility, but even more so, they require bravery and you to be pretty strong. So this is one of those things that you have to come to again and again and again in your practice and be willing to show up with your brave side because, you know, we don't know what's back there and it's hard to just trust. But what you're trusting is that you've got you and you can catch you if you fall. And that's a great lesson to learn whether you get that back bend or not. So hopefully if you are all the way into the point of wanting to get your drop back and your stand back up, you have a really decent back bend. It doesn't have to be the deepest back bend ever. You don't have to have a super perfect back bend in order to drop back and stand back up. Although the standing back up does require a little bit, excuse me, someone's thinking of me, um, a little bit of a deeper back bend in order to get that stand back up. Easy enough to do is start practicing on the wall. Walk your hands down, walk your hands back up. Do that again and again until you start to feel like you can drop back and catch the wall a little bit lower rather than as high up. That's pretty self-explanatory, but it takes a bit of stretching out of the shoulders, stretching out of the hip flexors, strengthening the back. Those things have to be done before you can work on any kind of drop back and stand back up. Whether you're using the wall, whether you're using the wall or not, you need to be very strong through the back, the shoulders, and through the legs. I have found that once I started to work on my strength rather than my flexibility, that's when my back bending practice really blossomed for me and I stopped having any injuries because I wasn't forcing flexibility, I was just strong enough to be able to go into those spaces. So, work those glutes, work those legs, work that back, and those back bends are gonna come naturally. So, a lot of times where people are afraid is this reaching up and behind, and I don't blame them because, I mean, I'm 41, I don't wanna just fall and crack my noggin. A couple things to think about though, that there are accommodations. You can use props to lift that up higher, and you have joints. <laughs> Your bones aren't just like one long bone that you're gonna break because it's gonna just hit the ground. When you land into your back bend, let your joints catch you. If you've done any of these videos with me, you've done some handstand jumping, and we always are bending through the knees, the ankles and the hips, we let that take the impact so that you're not just smashing your foot into the ground. The same thing is gonna happen when you work your back bend. Let me just show you, this isn't necessarily like, hey, do it exactly like this, but watch when I go into my back bend, it doesn't have to be beautiful because I'm gonna let my joints take the impact, accommodate for the impact. Bend, and then I can come into my tighter, nicer looking back bend. So allow the elbows to bend a little bit. Allow the wrists to take some of that impact. Allow the knees especially to take that. The knees can bend quite a bit in a back bend and they can send you forward some, and then it gives you space for the elbows to bend, and you're not gonna crack your head. You're not. <laughs> if you're worried about that, put a pillow or a blanket down, just shy of where your hands are, that way that's where your head's gonna be. Do these things so that you can feel safe. Okay, what we're going to do, in order to start to work on our actual drop back, is I want you to think about, it's a nice wide stance, I want the legs to be nice and strong, I want the spine to be lifted, chest lifted, instead of just thinking that we're bending the back, no, we're lengthening and lifting up out of the chest and lengthening the spine. So initially, just work on this, bringing your hands to the sacrum, lifting the chest up, sending the hips forward, keeping the feet firmly planted as you come into these standing back bends. Now if you feel any pain, pinching numbness, you gotta back away from that. And we're gonna have to work on strengthening the back some more so that we're not pinching things throughout the vertebrae, through the spine. But if that feels okay, and you can hang out with these little standing back bends, then maybe we're ready to start looking for the ground. And by looking for the ground, I mean getting a hand planted. If you're very much afraid, try this first. So you're not ready to take the arms up and over, but you can still send the hips forward, bend the knees. See, I'm not going up and over, I'm reaching to the side. Reach to the side, touch the ground. You're almost in a full back bend here. That's not so bad. Now maybe you can't stand right back up. So bend the knees, sit down, and then stand up. But work on that a few times. Reach back. Okay, that's not so bad. Try it with both hands. And once you feel pretty good, like okay, I know where the ground's at. There's nothing in my way. I feel safe. Now let's work on taking this arm easy back and then bringing the other one up and over. Okay, so that will look like 
Setting the hips forward, spine is long. Oh, there's the ground. Now my right arm can come up and over into that back bend, and this hand can switch, and I'm in my full back bend. Now how do you get back up? Well, you can come all the way down on your head, lay down, or you can switch this hand again. So pivot that hand, bring the other hand closer to the body, and come back up. So that's a nice way to kind of accommodate your fear of just reaching up and over. Plus you take a lot of the weight out of it. Bringing the arms up and over can be the spookiest part. So by taking only one arm over, it kind of makes it a little bit easier. Now that you've got this down, you can reach back. Now make it a little bit harder. Take the arm up and around and kind of come into a half back bend. Try that a few times. Up, around, back bend. And if you want, take that other hand all the way down. Let's try it. Reach up, around. This hand comes all the way into the back bend. Now I pivot this hand. There's my back bend. Now to come back up, flip that hand again. Bring this hand back up, let it pull you forward. It's that pulling of that arm forward, but even more so, it's the legs. The legs are what pull you forward and your breath. Inhale as you lift yourself back up. Okay, so that's not too bad. Make sure that you're doing it with both arms. So my right arm uh, is a little bit healing still from surgery, so I don't tend to do it with the right arm. But if I was doing this off camera, I would have both arms practicing it so that I would feel balanced from side to side. And now it's time to start thinking about both arms up and over. It helps to have a lifted surface. So if you were up in your living room, you would use your couch. Couch is a really nice height because it's nice and high where the arms of the couches are. You can use your bed. The bed's pretty high. I'm in the basement, so I'm using a mushroom. My kid is a gymnast, so <laughs> it's like a mini pommel horse is what this is. So we'll start with no longer reaching back, but we're going to try to get the arms up and overhead. And we have to get brave here because we don't know what's behind us. We don't know how far the ground is. We have to have a level of trusting, allowing the, springs, the springiness of our joints to take some of that impact and breathe through it. So send the hips forward, lengthen the spine, lift up through the pelvic floor. Start with the hands at the heart, maybe. Maybe start with the hands at the low back if you need that support still. Once you feel decent here, bring your hands up to your heart. Feel how active the legs are. The legs have you. Maybe up to the forehead. I'm going to start at this point telling myself, look for the ground, look for the ground, look for the ground. And breathing slowly as the legs stay super active. Lengthen the spine, legs are strong, push down through the feet, where's the floor, where's the floor, where, 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 there we go. Now to come back up, I'm going to push my hips forward and push really firmly down through the feet. Maybe you got to rock, rock a little bit, get a little momentum, inhale, send it forward. Ideally, you would have something, you would practice on this higher height, so maybe the couch is even higher. And then you would go down to the bed. And then you would go down to a very stable step stool. You want to work in stages so that you can slowly teach your brain not to be afraid of this drop back because you don't want to be fearful. In your fear, you may fall and do something clumsy and hurt yourself. So maybe the wall is when that starts to come in that you're like, okay, I'm ready to drop back. I no longer need my mushroom. I no longer need the couch. I'm going to look for the wall, and then you can walk the hands down, and that's a nice way to do it. But if you're looking to do that full wheel, that full drop back, and you're not quite having it, try using the legs more. Try using your breath more. And then also we'll talk about changing the arm position, because the arm position makes a huge difference. And I'm not just talking with that reaching back that's very beginner if you're super nervous, but if you think you have your drop back, but you're like, I can't get the stand back up, let's change the arms. So when we're going into our drop back, hands start at the heart, legs are nice and strong, pelvic floor is lifted, spine is long, chest is up. I'm going to start looking for the floor immediately, and I'm going to inhale all the way up, and then I'm going to exhale on my way down. Are we ready? Inhale. Okay, now I have it. And I want to stand back up, but I don't know how to do it. 
So we talked about a little rocking forward and backward. So a little rocking isn't so bad. Gets a little momentum going. Don't bring the arms up and overhead. Instead, bring them to the waist one at a time. That makes it a lot less scary than pulling the arms overhead. I brought the hands to the waist for a couple of years before I was ready to take the arms overhead. I was in my late 30s and our mid to late 30s and I just did not feel like I wanted to fall and crack my head open. So try that first and then with time, bring one arm overhead and just one hand to the waist and then with time, you'll be able to bring both arms overhead. So it may start like this. Come back up. And then you'll graduate a little bit more to this. One arm came overhead, and then we'll work on getting both arms overhead. Helps to shorten the stance, plant the feet. So much of that is power through the legs and through the glutes. That makes huge difference if you start to really work those areas instead of thinking, I can just bend through the back. Uh, you need to have strong low body to protect you through your back bends. It makes a huge difference. Anyway, I hope something in there helped you. Um, just be patient with yourself. Back bending can take a lot of time. It's got to be one of those, I am brave, I am persistent, I continue to show up, and I'm continuing to see where my practice takes me. You know, I went forward and I've gone backwards in my back bends. I had great drop backs. I was close to grabbing my ankles and then I'm not there anymore. Now I just have a nice drop back and it's like, you know, our practice will go up and down and we just ride those waves. So just be patient and gently persistent. <laughs> I hope that helped you guys. Oh, please, please keep in mind, and I mentioned it earlier, any pain, pinching, numbness, tingling, any of that kind of stuff, you gotta stop. You gotta stop. You're pinching something in your spine and you can cause some serious in injuries and issues. So please, if you feel any tingling or numbness, it's, it may not hurt terribly, but the tingling and numbness is, is a huge warning. You have to back away, come out of that back bend, decompress, forward fold, take some time, counter pose out of those back bends, okay? Counter posing is so important with those back bends, probably more than any posture that we do in yoga. All right, all right, there we go. I hope that helped and you found something that made your drop backs a little bit easier. And those stand-ups, work those legs, man. Send those hips forward. You can do it. You guys have a great day. Take care. Please subscribe. <laughs>